we have Professor Stephen E. Jones. Is Professor. Stephen Earl Jones is a professor of physics at Brigham Young University who conducts research into nuclear fusion and solar energy. Although the term cold fusion was coined by Jones in 1980, his experimental work was significantly different than more uh, controversial cold fusion experiments by Pons and Fleischmann. Recently, Jones has also investigated, and he investigated that for the federal government, by the way, the hypothesis, the hypothesis that the World Trade Center Twin Towers and WTC-7 all collapsed nearly symmetrically on September 11, 2001, were brought down by pre-positioned explosives. In 73, Jones earned his bachelor's degree in physics with honors from Brigham Young University and his Ph.D. in physics from Vanderbilt University in 78. Jones conducted his Ph.D. research at the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center from 74 to 77 and postdoctoral research at Cornell University and Los Alamos uh, Physics Facility. And he has written a scholarly uh, uh, paper that has, of course, uh, been posted on the Brigham Young University website, and right now he is working with several other universities and other uh, uh, physicists and scientists, geologists, studying some of the samples they were able to get from the North and South Tower, and it shows conclusively thermite was used to cut the pillars, not just thermite, the patented type used for demolition, thermate. Uh, Professor Jones, uh, if you can please uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you woke up to 9-11 and then go through the incredible new discoveries and developments uh, that uh, you have uh, been uh, working on. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> over the past several years, I received several nudges uh, to investigate uh, what really happened on 9-11. And uh, I must admit, it took me a while to <clears throat> warm up to the idea, but finally, I did. I, and the first time I saw Building 7 come down straight and fast, <laughs> I realized this is very curious. I hadn't seen it until just about, oh, it's been about a year and a half now ago. And as soon as I saw it, in a sense, I was hooked. I, I figured, you know, as a scientist, I can't just ignore this data. I could see that building come straight down. <clears throat> I'd seen demolitions before, controlled demolitions. They looked just like that, you know, kink in the middle. And then that building just comes straight down, almost at free fall speed. Yeah, it's got these uh, steel columns in the center and around the perimeter, and yet uh, it just falls straight down. So, unfortunately, I got onto a good website, uh, uh, a friend Jim Hoffman's site uh, there, uh, WTC7.net, and the, the nice thing that, uh, and I have many friends now, you know, in this uh, area. <laughs> and it's, uh, but okay. but uh, one, one nice thing that uh, he, uh, they did on that side is to provide references, and I like that because then I can check, you know, uh, check for myself. So I go to this reference. Uh, it talks about sulfidation of steel. Gosh, that's curious. How did this sulfur get in this steel? You know, it's high temperature corrosion of the steel with sulfur. Thought, Man, that's really strange. I read that. I went to the source. I read it, and uh, pretty quick I'm learning about uh, molten metal pools under both towers after they collapsed and Building 7. Now, Building 7 wasn't even hit by a, a jet, you know, and yet it comes down, and it's got this molten metal underneath. Where did that come from? I mean, you know, I hear people say, well, that would be from the metal of the planes. Well, that might work for the towers, possibly, but it sure doesn't work for Building 7. You know, it was 300-plus feet away from the North Tower, and and no plane hit it. So where does this molten metal come from? So uh, pretty quick then, uh, as I studied this, I, I wrote up a paper, which many of you have seen. If you haven't, I hope you would. Just Google on uh, Steve Jones World Trade Center. It'll pull it right up. And uh, I studied various aspects. And the molten metal is my first topic. It's the one that really caught my interest in. And the data is just coming together. Now, I have a sample of this molten metal. Previously, it's a molten metal here. Just a tiny sample. This is really all we need. I brought along with me at the last minute. I thought, well, I'll throw that in. And uh, by analyzing this, we determined it is not molten aluminum from the plane. Okay. Uh, indeed, it contains a great deal of iron, uh, which is the product of the thermite reaction. Now, thermite 
It can be purchased on eBay. And many people, I show it in my class, uh, f physics, and I'll be showing it this fall in my physical science class. It's commonly shown. It's a very brilliant reaction. You get this white flare, this white dust, which is aluminum oxide coming off, and then this yellow hot molten metal, just white yellow hot, you know, flowing out of this uh, reaction. Now this um, thermite is so hot, this molten iron, especially when you mix sulfur in, now it's called thermate. That's the, so sulfur added to this molten iron, and it'll just cut through steel, through structural steel, for example, like a knife through butter. And we also see this molten, yellow hot molten metal with white wispy ash pouring out of the South Tower just minutes before its collapse. And I've shown this video. And uh, it's just amazing. The photographs of that, it's in the NIST report. They say, well, probably molten aluminum from the aircraft. No, sorry, it's not. <laughs> we did experiments at uh, BYU with molten aluminum. We heated the steel pan up to yellow hot temperature, pour that aluminum out. It looks like silvery aluminum, even though the pan is yellow hot. And there's reasons for that. Uh, aluminum just doesn't emit much of this uh, uh, incandescent uh, glow. It's very low emissivity. Sorry for the technical details, but, but the point is the experiments show it still looks silvery, and yet out of the World Trade Center, it's yellow hot, okay? So as we looked at this, and, and the, the evidence is just piling up, this is, uh, it has the characteristics, not of molten aluminum and not of molten, you know, it's not just structural steel that somehow melted, no. It's very little chromium. But it does have sulfur and manganese and some other elements that are characteristic, you see. It's like a fingerprint that the criminal left behind. Uh, this uh, carries with it evidence. What, how was this done? What was used? And uh, I should explain real quickly. This, this particular, people ask me all the time, where'd you get this? Well, there's a woman in uh, Northeast <coughs> who uh, was involved, uh, w went to one of these uh, memorials that was being put together, you know, the 9-11 memorial, structural steel from the World Trade Center. She noticed on it dirt clinging to the structure. This is several years ago, before I joined the game here, so to speak. And she, uh, she said, well, that, that dirt is going to be subject to uh, rain. It's just going to be a mess, and so she just cleaned it up. She just cleaned some of that dirt off. You know, it was in the Northeast, and this memorial's going up. She cleaned it up, put it in a bucket. She saved it. Then as soon as my paper appeared, she read my paper. This last November would have been. As she read my paper, I'm calling for an investigation, particularly of this molten metal, and see what's going on. It'll tell us what happened, give us insight into what really happened on 9-11. Well, she immediately sent me this sample quite a large sample actually, but not all of it. She said, I'm keeping some back. And I said, that's good because we may want to, uh, you know, have another lab check it. Don't send it here. You know, you'll send it to another lab directly at some point perhaps, probably. Anyway, in there, I don't think she even noticed there's this molten metal chunks. See? In with this. So just from this memorial uh, to 9-11 and to the families who I deeply sympathize with those families. So we checked this metal, and that's how we got it. And uh, another sample like it, same characteristics, high in iron, manganese, fluorine. I mean, you know, wh where do these uh, uh, chemicals come from? And then as I studied about thermite arson, I'll, I'll wrap it up here. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no I, I was checking to see if my mic was uh, <laughs> live, Professor. It's key to state you got it from another site separately. Yes, we have two now, two separate sites. This other one. Okay, so, but, but a similar uh, process, you know, acquiring this, uh, just private people, uh, you know. And, and so anyway, the point is, as we analyze this, uh, I get into this question of thermite arson. It turns out that arsonists, these are the bad guys, right, start fires using thermite. I mean, you can buy this stuff on eBay. It's not like it's a secret or something. And, and, and uh, I don't recommend you play with this stuff, by the way. It's quite, it's very dangerous, <laughs> okay. Molten yellow hot iron pours out of this. It's highly dangerous, but it will cut through iron. So arsonists use it. And now there's a whole field then of uh, investigation. Investigators know how to look at this metal. 
And so, but, but these things are coming together, this chain of evidence. This is not the only thing. This is just one of the things. The collapse of Building 7 is another study that. A great paper by uh, Professor Cutler is in the Journal of 9-11 Studies. Dot com. You can look that up, his paper on the collapse of Building 7. And, and so anyway, this chain of events leads me to reluctantly conclude that indeed there does seem to be uh, insider, uh, in other words, not just the hijacked planes, but also others involved setting this, these thermite cutter charges in the World Trade Center to bring them down. This, again leads to the conclusion that our Constitution, which is our heritage as Americans, I love my country, I, I love the Constitution and the, and, and the people in America. I, I'm afraid that our Constitution is literally hanging by a thread at this stage. And so... Uh, Professor, you, gotta, you specifically, because you've talked about this on my radio show, you published it, you looked at the thermite, you tested, it's not just thermite, it's the patented thermate. With the sulfur. With the sulfur on top of it as an accelerant. Then we expand on that. Uh, this is even patented. This is actually used to cut large pillars. It's true that uh, when you add sulfur to the thermite, it now cuts very quickly through steel. And, and again, do, do you remember earlier I spoke of this paper I read, these uh, uh, metallurgists in Massachusetts had looked at World Trade Center 7 steel and some from the towers also. Strange, they said, that it, 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 high temperature sulfidation. Where does the sulfur come? Where do these high temperatures come from? Well, the answer, you see, we're, we're getting at it's totally consistent with this, uh, with this uh, ther thermate. So this. specifically, you, st you looked at the science and only thermite could create these molten pools that a month later were still at many you know, thousands of degrees hotter than jet fuel burns down, down in the basement collapse area. And then you uh, have the hypothesis thermite could do that. It's a prime suspect. You get samples. It's not just thermite. It's the demolition special uh, design thermite, thermate. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's accurate. I mean, and it's consistent with these other metallurgists. See, see, that was in the New York Times as the sulfidation of the steel came out. You know, World Trade Center 7, where, there's no airplane that hit it. Where, and so how do you explain this? And then the towers too. And, and the New York Times said, this is the greatest mystery uncovered so far. Words to that effect. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, you know. Thank you, Dr. Jones.